Buradan İslam ülkeleri başta olmak üzere tüm dünyayı İsrail'in Mescid-i Aksa'ya, Kudüs'e ve Filistinlilerin evlerine yönelik saldırılarına karşı etkili şekilde harekete geçmeye davet ediyorum. Tüm halkı Müslüman olan ülkelere sesleniyorum. Türkiye olarak biz üzerimize düşeni yaptık, yapıyoruz ve yapacağız. During the past few days, we have all witnessed images and videos displaying Israeli occupying forces evicting Palestinians from their homes in East Jerusalem. We have seen them use excessive violence against Palestinian protesters, shooting Palestinians, beating young women, defending those who drove over Palestinians. We have even seen them storm Islam's third holiest site, Al-Aqsa. The question is, has the world done enough to help? All major Arab countries made some sort of a statement condemning Israel's Al-Aqsa attacks. A few even summoned Israel's diplomatic envoys. But is that enough? Let's take a look at the UAE, for example. Its foreign minister, Khalifa al-Marar, said he strongly condemned the clashes and forced evictions and urged Israeli police to reduce tensions. But is this real diplomatic pressure? particularly as the UAE continues to invest hundreds of millions in trade with Israel under their new celebrated normalization deal. Has this deal granted the UAE any sort of power or influence to ease the occupation and rights violations occurring on a daily basis against the Palestinians? These images say otherwise. Egypt is another prime example. The most populous Arab country with over 100 million citizens, home to Al-Azhar, and an army that has fought four wars to defend Palestine and to liberate its own land from Israeli occupation. Today, images of its soldiers dancing with Israeli IDF at the Sinai border have become an internet sensation, while Cairo's collaboration with Israel in terms of security in Gaza or in Sinai continues unabated. And the same goes for Morocco and Saudi Arabia and their neighbors. Statements and tweets, yet no real action. It's not only the Arab inaction. It stretches to the majority of Muslim nations around the globe. Not the 1.8 billion Muslim people, but their governments. They have not reflected the zeal and support and affinity of their populations towards Palestine, Jerusalem and Islam's holy sites. Al-Aqsa is where Prophet Muhammad is thought to have commenced his journey to the heavens. It is considered the religion's third holiest site after the Kaaba in Mecca and the Prophet's mosque in Medina. Yet it is only Palestinian men, women and children oppressed, occupied and left to their fates that stand alone to protect Al-Aqsa. But Palestinians are not only Muslim and Jerusalem is not only holy for Arabs and Muslims. So where is the rest of the world? Well, if we're talking about Western media, Major outlets have arguably whitewashed Israel's occupation by describing what looked like a pogrom as clashes, bouts, tension, and nights of chaos, framing Israeli aggression and rights abuses against Palestinians as part of a sort of tit-for-tat conflict. The best example is the BBC, which claimed that protesters hurled stones at the police and that Israeli officers responded with stun grenades, rubber bullets, and water cannons. Meanwhile, on live streams, Israeli police were storming Al-Aqsa with rifles and stun grenades. And it's not only media, it's Western governments as well. Top of the list is the US, the country that provides Israel with billions in aid and arms, immunity from any real international pressure, and its latest deal of the century even signed off rights for more Palestinian and Arab lands to Israel. The Biden administration is no different than Trump's in terms of preserving and further strengthening Washington's special relationship with Israel. And the same goes for countries like Canada, the UK and Australia, who are always outspoken when it comes to championing human rights and democracy in the international arena. But when it comes to Palestinians, their silence is deafening.